This time on shift points, we work on a holly carburetor and we hang a brake booster and master cylinder. Thank you guys so much for joining. We're back working on the Galaxy again this week. Uh, Dad is working on getting some bushings made for the throttle linkage for the carburetor so we can get uh, the carburetor to uh, fully close and go wide open, of course. Uh, he's working on getting all that connected up. I'm going to use the original rod with some uh, with some bushings that he's making. So he's over here on the lathe working on that right now, right there. Um, one thing I want to talk about while he was doing that are these, uh, they're called Thompson Performance power blast plates. Um, basically, they go in the carburetor here and they're to help atomize the fuel. And I'll take one out here in a second and show it to you. But basically, it goes right here under under the squirter here. And basically what it does is instead of letting, letting this be a stream and coming out in a stream here, that stream hits this plate and actually turns into kind of a fan and it atomizes the fuel and allows there to be a much better mixture of air and fuel going through this deal. So when it gets to the combustion chamber, it's a lot better. There's supposedly a pretty healthy pickup. I'd have to go on their website and look at it again. I can't remember what they said, but it's 20 a horsepower. 20 horsepower is what they claim. They claim 20 horsepower on this. Um, so it, I think it would be interesting to do. I was going to put these plates on this carburetor for the motor for my uh, square body anyway. So I went ahead and got these to put in this deal. So I'll get this out and get one put in and show you kind of how it, how it seats and how it sets in here and kind of show you the thought behind it a little bit too. So when you take that off, there is this gasket here that goes right there. That actually gets removed and this plate takes the place of that gasket. Now the other gasket that's on the top of it, Dad has it, that's the other gasket that goes up here at the top of the screw, that stays in place. So we do remove this gasket before we put that plate on there and that's what uh, makes takes place of the gasket. Oh, here we go. Yep, and Dad's got this guy here. That gasket there will stay in place, and then the screw will go on. Power blast plate goes here. This goes on top of it, and the whole assembly will bolt down together. So I got these things in place here. You can see how they how they sit there. Uh, you can see the squirter here sprays into this hole in the top of the plate, and then that's what actually sprays it against the bottom side of this uh, brass plate that goes under there and that's what causes that um, a fan shape with the fuel instead of just the single stream so you'll see that's what it'll be when we get this thing put on and we get it running and everything i'll show you guys <clears throat> i'll see if i can get up there enough to where i can look down in here while it's running and fuel's going through it and you can actually see what's happening with it and this does go i did get two of them one for the primary and one for the secondary side of this carburetor so the other thing that dad wanted me to do before we put this thing on was to set all the idle air screws to a turn and a half out. So basically you go in here, turn these in all the way in just till they touch. So you feel them touch like that, then come off a turn and a half. So half, one, and a half there so I have all four of them set to that now the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these float bowls off and we talked dad was telling me these gaskets on these things are, are not so great and they they'll get stuck and everything else and he's got some non-stick gaskets we could put in here so we're gonna pull one of these float bowls off and just see how these stock ones are and then go from there and figure out what we need to do so we got the second part it actually already has the non-stick gaskets in it uh, this this is a little bit later model carburetor uh, I remember when I bought it, I looked it up. I think it was like a 2017 or 18 or something like that. I can't remember. It was something like that going off the number. So it's a little later and it has the nonstick gaskets and it also has the, uh, they're not cork on these bolt gaskets here. They're like a phenolic or something, uh, sort of a plastic or nylon or like a nylon washer on there for the gasket for the, um, uh, for the bolts to hold the floats on. So that is good. We can just put this thing back together and it'll be ready to go. All right, we've been working on the carburetor. Dad's been working on this piece. It's going to end up uh, being a, an assembly for the 
throttle linkage on this thing. This is the original uh, rod that came off the throttle pedal and went to the original carburetor. He straightened it out. It had a little bit of a kick in it. They straightened that out and then he's drilled and tapped this bushing here for this. This will end up getting threaded into this which will allow it to be adjusted. So that's going to go something like that. And he's welding this tab on which he'll then, he's going to make another bushing to where that uh, tab will uh, be perpendicular with the throttle on the carburetor itself and allow that to kind of actuate the carburetor. So that's what he's been working on. He's getting that welded up right now and going to kind of figure out the rest of it. Quick side note, this morning off camera we started, uh, we realized the past couple times that Dad's filled the red truck up and we've taken it out that it was still leaking gas even after all the things that we did, tightening it up and uh, tightening up all those bolts and plugging that hole and everything, it was still leaking gas. And uh, so we dropped the tank on it this morning and this is what we found. This is the gasket that goes around where the fuel pump goes through, uh, through the tank and this thing is shredded two pieces we didn't put any sort of aviation cement or anything on it either so like we normally do we put for something like that we'll put it on both sides of the gaskets and then put it on and bolt the whole thing in seal it up really good which we did do on the sending unit one but we did not do on this one but luckily we found this because this thing is like i said it's in two pieces it's just deteriorated and broken up but we don't really know we called tanks and got a um got a different one on the way that's not cork uh, Vi Vitron, Vitron gasket. Uh, it should be much better than this one. But yeah, so hopefully that solves that issue. And like I said, for like I said in the last video, anybody that's been following along with us since Power Tour or before with the 55 truck, we are still working on it sometimes. All right. So Dad got this all put together. We bolted down the carburetor, put the tab on here for the return spring. Um, but this is the original throttle rod. And that, the reason we wanted to keep that is because this guy back here has a, there's a clip. There's like a ball uh, back here that this clip clips onto. So we wanted to keep all that because that was just going to simplify this whole assembly. Uh, so that was that piece that you saw him making with the tab on it. That tab has a grade 8 bolt with a lock nut on the back side of it. That's letting that travel through that. So when you press the gas and this goes all the way up, you can see the full little motion he's gonna get in the car and hit it wide open for me so yeah, you can see the full motion there it goes to wide open throttle and if we look up here we can see well you can't really see it from here never mind take it back uh, I'll never be able to see it from there but you can see that does go all the way up nothing binds everything's really smooth uh, and like I said that just allows you to allows this to go all the way to where it needs to and then come back that's getting us full throttle and this spring's doing exactly what it was doing to begin with, and that's all good there. So that's gonna have this whole assembly wrapped up, and the throttle travel is not like crazy long, but I think that um, we're gonna try and drive it there, see how it does. Um, the thing that we would end up having to do if we had to make an adjustment, we would have to cut this rod and extend it to get the pedal to be standing up a little bit more in, in the cab, and then uh, in the car, have the pedal standing up more and then give it more throttle travel. But you'd have to cut this rod and extend it some to get the travel that you wanted. Uh, but I think for now, that's gonna be good. It's gonna allow us to do what we wanna do. It'll at least get us started and get us driving it a little uh, so we can kinda see what it's gonna take to go from there. But that's great. Uh, I got the carburetor all put back together. You guys saw that. I'm glad we went ahead and pulled that off and, and did that stuff to do some checks on it. Um, that's gonna work great, I think. This thing just kind of looks a little racy. Me and Dad was talking about it. Uh, me and Dad were talking about it the other day, just with the with the holly and the aluminum the aluminum surge tank and the headers and everything. This whole engine bay just kind of looks a little racy. Uh, you know, it's gonna be. Uh, I think it's gonna do really well. Well, today we are going to build the plug wires for this thing. Uh, we've been uh, we've been planning on doing this for a little while now. Uh, the guys and gals over at Southwest Performance Parts were very nice and sent these over to us to use. Uh, looks like a really nice set of plug wires. They do have uh, the straight boots on the end of them, which is what was on this thing. 
and they are the build your own. So the ends, the, the HEI side of these are not terminated and so uh, we'll be able to build our own, get these cuts the right length, all of that good stuff. So because of that we've got the plug wires here ready to go. These are the boots that will go over on the distributor side of stuff. And just to kind of show off this kit a little bit, um, it came with the plug wires, all the boots, plus an extra. This is the cold wire boot, and then it comes with all the ends that are needed to be crimped on. But the couple of little things that I think are pretty neat is that it comes with, first off, these guys here, uh, little numbered tabs that you can put on the wires themselves to help you... Um, to help you keep straight your firing order, make sure you get this thing wired how it's supposed to be. And the other thing that's nice is it comes with six of these wire separators. Uh, I had never seen this in a set of plug wires before, but two four wire plug separators, two three wires, and two two wires. So a really nice kit and universal. You can use it on anything, six cylinder, eight cylinder, all of that good stuff. Dad has a set of these, these are Moroso brand ones, uh, crimpers, and we'll use these to crimp the ends onto the wire once we get them cut to the right length, and then we can slide the boot over those as well. So all of that is a really nice set, and it's going to make a really nice clean install. You can buy the ones that are already made, but they're always, like, they, they're never like a perfect fit, right? It's, it's like the old saying, a universal fit kit. That means it doesn't fit anything super well. Well, with these, you can build them. You can get everything on how you want them. Get everything cut to the right length. Make sure they look really nice. And with those tabs on the valve covers that have the uh, wire separators on them also, between that, this is about as easy, uh, it's is about as clean of an install that you can do uh, with a set of plug wires like this. So we're going to go ahead and start getting these cut down to length and figure out which ones we need and what all we're going to do here. So one thing before we get started, Dad's going to go ahead and put some dielectric grease on the boots themselves so that they go on the plug onto the plugs themselves easier. Uh, something that's a little nice to have. Uh, this came in a set of MSD plugs that we got uh, a while back. Uh, this little block is made to crimp. So in, if you don't have a set of these uh, set of these uh, ratcheting crimpers like we have, this comes with it. You can put this in a vise and use the vise to crimp them, which we don't need because we have these crimpers. But the nice thing about these is you can see these two holes on each side of this guy. With those, that's what you use as a gauge on how much of the wire to cut off. Uh, so you get it put in place like this. You figure out this one's going to number one right, uh, sorry, number one right here. So it's going to number one right there. And then you can kind of decide what length you need it to be. And then you can take and cut that with, uh, with just some uh, standard cutters. Go ahead and cut that. Then you can use this and that's going to tell you how much to strip off of it. So if we take this plug wire here before we cut it, and I'm going to just run this through it real quick. What you would do, pretend that that is not sticking out there, you would run this all the way to the end, and then you can just take a, um, I just take a, uh, a razor blade and put it right against that right there, and spin the plug wire, and that'll cut it, and then you can take and just pull the rest of this off, and that will leave this out which is what we need uh, which is also needed whenever we put the terminals on this will get bent back and then the terminal will get put over that so it's got really good contact and then the terminal is crimped on so you can see we have these kind of laid out we plugged them in dad plugged them into the plugs and then we've run them up here we use one of the uh, four wire separators that came with this kit and then run the other one on the ones that are on the valve covers here so we've got those routed how they kind of need to how they're going to end up having to kind of stay once we get it gone here and then you can see kind of the rat's nest of the wires that are run here because we haven't started shortening these yet um, just want to show you these uh, these markers again this has helped us out this is not a firing order that we work with really ever <laughs> so uh, the, these these are helping us keep track of which wires which uh, on the forge number one's right here and it goes in order one two three four back to the front five six seven eight so that's kind of laid out diff much differently than a Chevrolet of course uh, and we've talked about this before but this distributor does rotate counterclockwise instead of clockwise like a Chevrolet like a small block um, but so these uh, these little markers on the wires are helping us keep these straight so that we make sure that we are attaching these in the right place and the other thing that dad does when we go to wire something like this takes a silver sharpie and he marks all the positions on the distributor cap itself you go, man, you got, dad's done this for years and all this different stuff. Yeah, guess what? 
stuff happens. You know what I mean? So any safeguard that you can do to kind of make this as dummy proof, for lack of a better term, as possible, um, is what we try and do to make sure that whenever we go to fire this thing up, it's in the right order. We don't have anything crazy going on. This thing's jumping and going nuts because it's in the wrong firing order. So um, anything to do that and kind of protect as much stuff as we can and make it as simple as possible is what we try to do. And that's what we're going to do here. So now that we've got these run, we can go ahead and start uh, deciding on the links, get them cut, and I'll show you guys how to properly crimp a plug wire. So when you're doing this, so basically what you're going to do is when you have the initial cut to get this to length, um, since you're going to have to strip this, what I do, what we do when we do this, I just take the terminal here and kind of hold it roughly where it's going to be here, then hold the wire up, and you know that the strip is going to happen right here at this crimp joint, so hold that up there, and then I'll mark this to write about the same length as the terminal right there, and that's where we'll do our initial cut, and then we can put it in our block and strip it to get that back, and then that'll expose uh, the wire inside so that we can uh, so that we can go ahead and get the rest of the crimp done. So this is what this block's for. So you'll take the plug wire here, run this through that, and run it to the end of this block. There's two different notches here. One's if it's the standard crimp, and then one he is right here for the double crimp. And basically what that means is these right here are a standard crimp. They have this one set of crimps here. This will go onto the wire and then get crimped. There's another set they call a double crimp that has this that goes over the wire. And then there's another smaller crimp in here in the center that would actually, um, uh, that actually crimps onto the wire itself, not to the outside uh, silicone housing and then that's what would make your connection. These are the standard ones, that uh, wire that comes that will get wrapped around here to the bottom and then get put in place into this. And we'll show that here in just a second. So here's what I was talking about as far as how you put this uh, crimp on. So you fold that wire over under into the crimp so that makes solid contact with that boot or with that, uh, with that terminal there. You slide that down to where there's about an eighth of an inch of the uh, rubber sticking up on the upper side of the of the terminal and then that's where we'll bring in our crimpers and crimp that thing in place. Right. So you can see that crimpers makes a really nice solid connection on the on the wire itself on the silicone wiring and then we can slide the boot over this guy put a little dielectric grease on it slide the boot over it That'll set that right in place. Perfect. Now, right there. And when you put those on, you can hear that nice solid connection. There's one of eight done. Took a little kind of back and forth and figuring out exactly how to route these on the cap. But we've kind of got everything kind of where it's going to live. We'll put some more uh, wire separators on these to kind of keep everything held up off the carburetor and kind of neaten it up a little. But in general, this is how these uh, these are how these go. Um, everything went really well. Got everything snapped in place, including the cool wire here uh, that snipped on. And so all that's all good. Everything lined up really well. These things made super well. And just a reminder, these are from Southwest Performance Parts. So if you need a set, just go over to there. Go to the link in our social media, and you can click on that, and you can go through that and buy it. And it'll help out the channel without you having to spend an extra penny. 
So appreciate you guys doing that if you do it. These plug wires are really nice. Well, we're finally at the point where we can go ahead and start mounting the master cylinder and the brake booster and all that up to the firewall. That's going to be a little bit of a job we figured, so we've been kind of putting it off to the end here. But we went ahead and got this bracket assembly that come with the MBM kit. It's already mounted up here. Luckily, this thing had all four holes in it. Some of these kits, you have to drill these upper two holes. When we did this for Eddie's 50, uh, 66 truck, we had to drill those upper two holes and put some threaded inserts in. This had the two bottom ones down here. That's where the, the original master cylinder was, little fruit jar master cylinder. And this already had two threaded inserts in it, so all this lined up really well. So now that is run through the firewall of this thing. And there's a rectangular arm that comes through the firewall and mounts up to the brake pedal itself. So when we get in here, you can see right there, there's that arm coming through the firewall. It goes on to a bushing, or there's a bushing here that goes on to a, goes on to this mount here. There's a mount there so we can go ahead and get this set where we want it. That was that's a pretty snug fit, um, but it does it because of that plastic bushing that's in there. It allows free movement and all this, so all that's how it needs to be. I do have to get in here and get that pushed back and get the C clip put back in place. Uh, we'll get that put in place and that'll lock this whole assembly in, so that shouldn't be any big deal. So then, the next thing that we will be doing is mounting up the brake booster to this bracket. And I think we're going to end up having to do some cutting on, there's a threaded rod that comes through it and that's what actually actuates the uh, booster and master cylinder and all that stuff. So I think we're probably going to end up having to do a little cutting on that, but let's get that bolted up here and see how it lines up. So with this brake booster mounted up uh, onto the bracket that's on the firewall, this rod is too long. The instructions do say that that's uh, a good possibility that that's going to happen. So we're going to put this in here like this. I'll hold the brake booster and dad's going to cut it off here and we'll get enough, uh, get this cut off enough where we can get everything bolted up and get everything attached how it's supposed to be. We got the uh, booster bolted up to the bracket, uh, the pedal bracket, and then now we're working on getting the master cylinder fitted. Uh, I want to show you what that, what the booster and everything looks like. It looks really nice in here. Kind of goes along with everything. Uh, what we're doing with the master cylinder is there is a pin. You got it in there, don't you? In the master cylinder, there's a pin that goes inside the master cylinder, and when that booster gets engaged, that drives that pin in. There you go. This guy right here, this pin, it's got. Um, Got like a concave uh, uh, feature there that goes into the end of this booster right there. And so this booster gets actuated and drives this pin and that's what's actually uh, moving inside of the master cylinder. This comes too long usually and you have to get it cut down to where it will make sure that you're not, that the master cylinder is not engaged when you're not on the pedal, if that makes sense. So. You don't want this thing loading the master cylinder all the time. You want it to just be off of the master cylinder and then start to engage as soon as you hit the brakes. Um, so what we're doing, we'll put this it back in here that goes right there, and then we're going to bolt this up or we're going to hold it up to it. We already know, and I'll turn the light on, and you can see how that rocks. It doesn't lay in there flat. So you can kind of see how it's not laying in there flat. That's rocking against that pin. That means we need to shorten it some. So what we're doing is taking some feeler gauges here and Dad's trying to hold it as square as he can. And I'm taking those feeler gauges, putting in there and figuring out roughly how much we need to take off that pin. Uh, you don't want to take off too much because then you have too much brake, tra uh, too much brake pedal travel. But if you don't take off enough, like I said, it's loading up the master cylinder all the time, even when you're not pressing the brakes. So there's a balance you got to strike here and get it just right. That's why we're using these feeler gauges like this. So I was able to get a 40 thousandths uh, thickness down in between that and kind of get that flat. That's going to take 45 and get about 5,000 clearance, just a little bit of clearance there. And then so we've got this thing chucked up in the lathe, getting ready to get it turned down. So we ended up taking, or dad ended up taking about 50 thousandths off that pin. And you can see now that that thing 
uh, seats right against that booster. The master, and there's no wobble to it. But it's going to bolt up exactly how it's supposed to be. So that should allow that to not have the brakes applied, but have, uh, but not have an excessive brake travel either. Well, it touched at 40, and it didn't touch at 50. Right. So it's so. got about probably about 7,000 square inch or so. Okay. 5,000 or something. Perfect. Got the master cylinder hung on here. There's no fluid in it or anything like that. Um, one thing you do have to do with this kit, there is a switch that goes in right here where this plug is. You have to pull, that's a that side of a brake failure switch. So if one side of this fails, we talked about this on the red truck too, but if one side of this fails, one line of these, if the rear brakes get knocked out, this will shuttle and cut off the fluid on the rear brake so it doesn't dump all the fluid and it'll make sure that you keep front brakes or vice versa. Anyway, when that happens, that shuttle in here happens and it triggers a switch and it'll turn the light on on the dash. You can put a light in. I'm gonna see if I can use the stock brake light that's already in there, figure out how to do that. That would be pretty cool if we could. If we could. Um, so anyway, that would trigger that light and let you know you have a problem and let you get somewhere and, and get this taken care of. Um, but you take that switch out and replace it with this plug. That plug keeps that shuttle valve from moving while you're uh, while you're bleeding the brakes. So uh, you got to get that put in place. But that whole assembly is in there and it looks really good. It's like, I mean, it's kind of nice that everything matches. I know that's kind of a that's kind of a bonus. I'm not really worried about that normally, but it's pretty cool that everything kind of goes together and ties together in this thing. So um, should function pretty good. We've got those lines over there. And now what we've been looking at is we've got the fittings. Uh, we already had some fittings from uh, some extras from 55 truck. Uh, so we've got those in here. So now we've got to think about running the lines. There's these two fittings. This goes to the left side front, right, or sorry, left right side front left side front and then there's one fitting in the back here that runs back and down and goes to the back for the rear brake lines so that'll go back there into a t fitting and then it'll come out to each side on the axle housing or however that's going to end up looking um, so there's three of those but we're finally to the point now where we can start running some brake lines and that will be yeah that's going to be a pretty big job so but we're going to go ahead and start thinking about it and figure out how to get down and what we're going to do uh, to get this all tied together. Before we get to running the brake lines and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and swap out the windshield washer motor. This motor, we did some checking on it. It's getting power to it, but we were not getting anything from it. So I found one. It's a replacement, which I could not believe that you could find one that easily. But one Amazon got it in like three days. So that's pretty cool if that's there. It's an exact replica of it. I'm going to get the old one off here and I'll show you the comparison between the two. So you can see right here, there's the stock one, the one that I'm assuming stock one, the one that was with it, that was on the car, and then there's the replacement. Got the connection for the terminal, and it should line up just perfectly. Got a little, uh, I'm assuming a ground strap right here for all that. And man, yeah, this is a, I could not believe how good this deal is. This is a little taller, so I'm not exactly sure. I guess it's just a little difference in the motor itself, but you can see this thing's corroded and eat up pretty bad. So get this put in, and the other thing I got was a new windshield washer fluid bag. So you guys saw the blue bag hanging on the inner fender of this thing. That is the windshield washer fluid reservoir. Instead of a plastic one, it's this bag. The one I had was busted. I put some water in it the other day to check it and it leaked like a sieve. So got a new one of those as well from the same company. I think it's like Auto Crafter or something like that. I'll check, verify that. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing bolted up in place, hang the new bag, and I'll figure out what hoses I need as well. Man, that thing just fell in place. I know that uh, you can see it back there, wire connected up no problem right there in the top, three bolts lined up exactly how they were supposed to, uh, everything just went there perfectly. Um, I know I complain about supply chain and parts and quality of parts and things like that a lot because you deal with it a bunch whenever you're doing this stuff, but uh, sometimes just the littlest things kind of makes you pretty happy and that just fell right in place and as long as we get it primed and everything works up how it's supposed to. That should go back to work, and that would be awesome to have that. Uh, that's Fairlane. That thing's got a, a a manual pump. You have to like hit it with your foot, a foot pump, to pump up the windshield washer fluid. This thing come with the electric motor, so that's nice. Um, I'm gonna wait to put the bag on because the last thing I want to do is get to working under this engine somehow and then puncture that thing. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll wait to get that put on. I'll show you guys that whenever it gets put on, um, but. Man, this thing's just coming together. Just a lot of stuff happening right here together at this time, and it's looking good. And hopefully, it's gonna. Hopefully, we're gonna hear this thing run here pretty soon. Hopefully, when we get the brake lines run, get the fuel lines run, we'll get to hear this thing run 
I'm very excited about that. Uh, so yeah, that's that. That's pretty much going to kind of wrap us up for this week. Um, they got this carburetor put on and got all that bolted up and got the throttle linkage and everything figured out. That was a big deal uh, to kind of get all that wrapped up and kind of have all this uh, under the hood really close to being done. And getting that brake booster master cylinder was really important too. It took quite a bit of time to get everything connected up and doing all that stuff. Um, so that's just little things like that that kind of take that time that you kind of have to push forward on to kind of get these projects done. Man, we're really excited. This thing looks great and it's going to do really well, we think. So see you next week. Thanks for joining.